Hello guys. So today we are going to go over our review paper that we did yesterday. This is our practice test. Um, I know I told some of you, but this test is a lot, or sorry, this practice test is a lot like what your test is going to be like. So if you did well on this, if you understand this, then you'll do fine on the test because I literally looked at the test when I made this um, review. Okay. So like always, if you need me to slow down, go ahead and just pause the video. You can always back it up. So you're kind of working at your own pace here if you need to. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Number one, uh, I don't think you can pull this up yourself, but just follow along with me. On my screen, I have uh, the actual document up and I'm actually taking the pretest, right? And then on the other side, I will show you my work as I go because I also told you make sure you are showing your work. All right, let's go ahead and look at this. Number one said, which number makes both sentences true? Okay, so five times a number equals 35, and 35 divided by five equals what number? All right, well, if I were you, I would. you could look at this a few ways, okay? Five times, plug all those numbers in and see if it works. Five times five, does that equal 35? No, five times five is 25. Five times six, what is that? That's 30. Five times seven, what is that? Oh, look at that. That would be 35. Five times seven equals 35. Now, if I didn't understand how to do that, well, then I would say seven is my answer, right? If I don't understand how to do that, well, you have your 35 divided by five, and we know we can draw a picture for that. So we would draw our picture, draw our box, and we would separate it into those five equal pieces because it's divided by five. So here's one piece, here's two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, and five pieces, okay? So square divided into five equal pieces. And we are going to separate those 35 total pieces into those five boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, if it would draw, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So how many pieces are in each box? We have seven, okay? Now, you can do that with any division problem. Take the number that you're dividing it into, so that five, that second number, the five, right after the division sign, and make that many boxes and separate your total pieces. So those 35 pieces just go through, give one to each. Kind of like you're dealing cards, okay? Think about that. If you're playing a game and you're dealing your cards out, you're going to give one to each person and then two to each person and then three to each person. Otherwise, if people don't have the same amount of cards, the game is not fair, okay? So think about it that way. All right, so my answer I found was seven. I'm going to mark seven and I click next. Good to go. That one wasn't too, too bad. Now, we're on our next one. Sorry, I'm going to erase this. I don't know how to... Maybe I can just... Nope, that's going to take too long. There we go. That's a little faster. You're not hearing me as much. All right. Next question. Which number sentence is true? So go through these number sentences. You know how to divide, right? If we have five divided by one, we know we take that second number and we make that many boxes, okay? I make one box. And if I'm dividing five equal pieces between that one box, well, one, don't have any other boxes, two, three, four, five. So are there five pieces in each box? Yes, so that first one works. But you're not gonna just say, oh, that first one works, let's go, click it and then move on. I want you to try every single one of them because that is the sign of a good test taker, okay? Try every single one. And it's going to give you more practice to do even better on your tests, on your future tests. So 8 divided by 0. Uh, well, we have 0. Sorry, I shouldn't have even drawn it. We have 0 pieces and we have 
or sorry, zero uh, boxes and we have eight in each box, that's not going to work, is it? No. You can also look at eight times zero. That would be zero. Okay. There's zero pieces in each box because there's no boxes. All right. So we know the second one is not going to work. What about the third one? Seven divided by one equals one. Well, I have my one box, right? And I have seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I should have. Five, six, seven. Okay. Is there only one piece in each box? No, so that one's not going to work. And five divided by five. I have five boxes. So let me draw my five boxes. One, two, three, four. I should have done that differently. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's good enough. It's going to be good. <laughs> and then we have our five equal pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here there's one in each box. Well, that says our answer is zero, so that's not going to be right either. So letter A was right, but it's a good thing I checked, right? So I hit letter A, or I hit the first one, click next. And I'm on question three. David has 24 apples. He wants to put them evenly into four baskets. Which number sentence is the same fact family as 24, because he has 24 apples and he's dividing them? 24. Oh. There we go. I didn't think it was writing. Oh. 24. There we go. Divided by 4. Okay. What's the same as that fact family? Equals six. Well, one thing I want to show you. Sorry, guys. This is not working like I want it to. 24 divided by four equals six. Okay, that's my fact family. Or that's my equation. They want to know which one of these is the same fact family as this equation. Well, what do we know about fact families? If I'm dividing... The fact families are division and multiplication. There's two division problems, two multiplication problems, okay? So I know it either has to be a division problem or a multiplication problem. That automatically eliminates uh, the second one and the fourth one, okay? Because the second one is adding, the fourth one is subtracting. So those will not work. So I'm looking at the multiplication on the first one and the third one, okay? So now I just need to make sure that they have the same numbers because I also know fact families use all of the three same numbers. Okay, so 2 times 3 equals 6 is my other equation. Well, I see that the 6's are the same. Are any other numbers the same? No. Okay, so that's not going to work. Let's try the other one. The other multiplication one is 6 times 4 equals 24. Okay, I see my 24s are the same. I see I have two sixes, and I see I have two fours. So there we go. That one is correct. I have the same numbers, and it's multiplication, which goes with that division. Okay. All right, my next one says, Kendall bakes nine trays of muffins uh, each tray contains six muffins for a total of 54 muffins. Which number sentence is not the same fact family as the others? So first of all, let's figure out this equation. We have Kendall bakes nine trays of muffins. Each tray contains six muffins. So if I picture this in my head, I have nine trays. Oh, I figured out why it's not working, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it says there are six muffins on each tray. So if I have six on this one, six on this one, six on this one, six on this one, six, 
six, six, six, and six, okay? And it, and it says there are a total of 54. I am not dividing on this one, okay? It says Kindle bakes nine trays of muffins. Each tray contains six muffins. Aren't I taking nine, or sorry, six, I'm taking six, nine times, right? Which tells me my total is 54. Okay, so that is my multiplication equation. This is asking which number sentence is not in the same fact family as the others. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, which equation below is not part of that fact family? Six times nine equals 54. Well, nine times six equals 54 is because, well, six and nine are just flip-flopped, right? Uh, 6 times 9 equals 54. That's the equation I have written. Uh, 54 divided by 9 equals 54. Okay, well, I'll admit, Miss Fullen can't messed up on this one. That one is supposed to say 54 divided by 9 equals 6, right? But, again, made a mistake, right? So if you would have chosen that one, it would have been fine. But just know that if it said 54 divided by 9 equals 6, that's still part of that fact family. You're still using those same numbers. And even though it's division, that's fine, okay? Because it still works with that. You can have two multiplication problems and two division problems. They're all part of that fact family. That fourth one is the actual one that I was looking for because it's subtraction. We cannot mix multiplication in the same fact family as subtraction. It just doesn't work, okay? You need multiplication and division together and then addition and subtraction go together, okay? You cannot mix that subtraction with the multiplication, okay? All right, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Try another. Lennox has 42 tomato plants. He wants to plant them in nine, or sorry, seven rows with an equal number in each row. How many tomato plants will go in each row? Okay, so he has 42 tomato plants. You can do that. You can solve this problem. You can draw 42 tomato plants. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. 42 tomato plants, okay? And they are in seven rows. Or sorry, he wants to put them into seven rows with an equal number in each row, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and circle seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my seven. Okay, he plants the second row, or sorry, he puts more down in the rows. There's those seats gone, there's seven. Here's seven more. Let me make sure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's my seven, and here's my other seven. I go through again and plant another seven, and I go through again and plant another seven. So how many rows, or how many do I have in each row? I have seven rows, so I go through and plant seven seeds because that's how many rows there are, one in each row, and then I go through again and put two in each row. So this is my first time of planting the seeds, my second time, my third time, fourth, fifth, and sixth time of going through the rows and planting one seed. Okay, so that means that there are six tomato plants in each row. Okay, six tomato plants in each row because I have six groups of seven. So what would my division equation be for this? I would have 42 divided by seven equals six. Okay, that's my division equation. And there you go. There's your six. Okay, click my next button, erase that, bring it up again, 
Let's look at our number six. There are 20 people going on a trip. They will travel in vans with four people in each van. How many vans are needed for all of the people? Okay, let's do this as our repeated subtraction. So we have 20 total people going on this trip. And it says they will travel in vans with four people. So if I take four people away, what do I get? I get my 16, right? Well, that's that represents one van because four people get to go in that one van. Let's do it again. I take my 16 from my last problem. Subtract four again because that's another van. That's how many people can fit in one van. 16 minus four is 12. There's another van. So I got to keep track of the vans that I have. One, two. If I plant, or sorry, not plant. I have my mind set on that other last problem. 12 minus 4, that's another van. Okay, 12 minus 4 is 8. So there's my third van. But I keep going because I still have 8 people. So 8 minus 4 is 4. So that would give me four vans. And then I have four minus four, which is zero. And that would give me my five vans. So that's one, two, three, four, five vans. Four people in each van. Does five times four equal 20? Yeah, okay. So my answer would be five people, or sorry, five vans five vans. Next problem. Which number makes the number sentence true? So I'm looking for a number divided by eight equals seven. Well, I know that a division problem, I can make a multiplication problem because they're fact families, right? And I just take the last number, the seven, times, so I take that 7, my last number, times 8 equals, and it's going to give us that biggest number, right? That total number that's at the front. So what is 7 times 8? You guys know how to figure that out now, don't you? 7 times 8. Well, we have 8 plus 8. Here's 8. 8. 8. So we're drawing seven groups of eight. There's, oh, and I think I drew one too many. Okay, so I have, no, I drew two too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of eight. Okay, now I can add them up. So I know eight plus eight is 16. And I know these two together are 16. And I know these two together are 16. And then there's our 8. So 16 plus 16. So that's this plus this is 32. 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 52. Okay. I add another 16. I totally did that wrong. I think Miss Follenkamp was at school too long today. <laughs> six plus six. Um, we have 12, right? I don't know what I was thinking before. I think I was multiplying. It's 12. Six plus one is seven plus one is eight. I'm just going to stop. I'm multiplying again. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> six plus six is 12. Carry my one. One plus one plus one, three. So I am at 32. I've used my 116 and my other 16, so I've added 16 twice. Okay, Miss Follenkamp is good to go. See, I make mistakes just like you do. I'm using this last 16 here because I crossed that one off and I did not use it yet. 6, 7, 8, 3, 4. So I'm at 48, but I still need to add that last 8. So plus 8 equals 8 plus 8 is 16. 4 plus 1 is 5. So 56 would be my answer because I just added eight, seven times. Okay. You guys know how to multiply. Miss Volenkamp might not be able to, but you guys can, right? 
56. And we know 8 times 7 or 7 times 8 is 56. 5, 6, 7, 8. That's how I remember it. All right. So number 8 says Evie has 32 beads to put equally on each of the four bracelets. How many beads will go on each bracelet? Okay. So let's draw all of our bracelets out. So we have four bracelets. So I'm going to draw a box. And I'm going to draw four, split it up into four. So I have four boxes. And it says there are 32 beads to put in the four bracelets. So I have 32 beads to separate into these four bracelets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, so how many beads did I place in each box or on each bracelet? Well, I can easily see that's five, six, seven, eight. Eight beads is eight times four, 32. Yes, it is. So there I go. Eight beads will go on each bracelet. Almost done. Eli has 28 marbles and seven bags. Which number sentence shows how many marbles he can put in each bag if he puts the same number of marbles in each bag? Okay, so he has 28 marbles. And he has seven bags. So it drew, you can see that down there, seven bags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you're counting those boxes. And there's a total of 28 marbles. So I can take those 28 marbles and split them between each bag. If I would do that, which let me do it for you. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I have 28 marbles. So I'm going to go ahead and split those marbles up between the bags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. So I split my 28 marbles up. I see that I can put four marbles in each bag and there's seven bags so what would my division equation be for this i put 28 right divided by seven bags so 28 marbles divided by seven bags equals four marbles okay so that would be my answer 28 divided by seven equals four now some of you whenever you were doing this asked me well why doesn't 28 divided by four equal seven work that is a fact family, but it's asking you, well, it's part of the fact family, right? But it's asking you which number sentence shows how many marbles he can put in each bag if he puts the same number of marbles in each bag. So how are you going to solve this problem? Okay, you don't know about that four yet. So take your 28 and divide them between the seven bags. You have no idea about that four. That's not how you're going to solve this problem. They want to know, which number sentence shows how many marbles he can put in each bag? Well, four is the amount of marbles he can put in each bag. That's how you're going to figure out or that's how you're going to show how many marbles he can put in each bag. Okay, so your 28 divided by 7 equals 4. Show me how you solved it. Okay, so 28 divided by 7 equals 4 is the answer. All right, number 10. The picture below shows how 16 marbles are arranged on a tray. So I, or sorry, marble apples. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight apples, and then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 apples. If I could draw on there, I would, but know that there's a total of 16 apples. Okay. And it wants to know which division sentence can be written using the picture. Okay. 
So I always know my total number goes first. I've told you that many, many, many times. There are a total of 16 apples. So I know that number goes first. That is always the total. The total is always the first number in a division problem. It's the biggest number in a division problem goes first. Then, how can we divide this up? How did they divide this up in the picture? They divided it up in twos. Do you see how there's one row of eight and then there's two rows of eight? Yeah, so they divided it into two. 16 divided by 2 equals 8. Find that answer. And then hit the next button. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys, if this helps you, it kind of always helps me. Um, if I'm trying to solve something like this, it says which division sentence can be written using the picture. Don't even look at the question or the answers, okay? If that helps you, don't look at the answers. If it's a problem like this, right, whenever you're required to show how you solved okay don't look at the answers write what you think down and then look at the answers and see if anything matches that has always helped me because then I know if I get the right answer then I'm gonna find it right okay so 16 divided by 2 16 total pieces divided into two rows equals 8 in each row All right, number 11. Eight children have eight crowns to share equally. How many crowns will each child get? Some of you got this one wrong, okay? I think you were just overthinking, I hope. So let's go ahead and look at it. <clears throat> oh, oh, I hope I didn't ruin that. Okay. I've never done this before, so we're trying something out. I have eight children, and they each have eight crowns. So I'm going to draw my children. Well, let's do it this way. I'm going to draw my children, kind of like I did in one of my other problems. Remember, whenever we first started doing this, I drew eight children. There's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight children. There we go. And it says there are eight children and they have eight crayons to share equally, okay? All they have is eight crayons. That's all they have. So how are they going to share those eight crayons equally? Well, go around. One, this person gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, guess what, guys? I'm out of crayons. So how many does each person get? Each person gets one. Some of you put 64 because I think you did 8 times 8. And that is not right because it says they have a total of 8 crayons to share equally. Okay? How are you going to get 64 crayons if you only have 8? Just think about it a little bit before you answer. Okay? Think about does this make sense? Could they have 8 crayons and then each get 64? No. No. Okay, where's those other 50-some crayons going to come from? I'm sure they'd like it better if they each got 64, but it's not going to work. So they each get one. All right. Just a couple more. Zoe has 90 marbles in bags. Each bag has 10 marbles. Which number sentence is not in the same fact family as the others? Okay, so first of all, figure out your equation. Zoe has 90 marbles in bags. Each bag has 10 marbles, okay? So she has a total of 90 marbles. Each bag has 10 marbles. So my equation would be 90, and I'm dividing them into bags that have 10 marbles in each bag. So 90 divided by 10, well, 10 times what number equals 90? Just write your fact family. Well, I know 10... 10 times 9 equals 90, right? Because 10 um, times any number is that number and then adding a 0 to it. So, <clears throat> it, but it's asking which number sentence is not in that fact family. So, which number sentence does not match the ones that I have over on the right? 90 divided by 10 equals 9 or 10 times 9 equals 90. Well, there's my 9 times 10 
equals 90, which is the same, just flip-flopped, commutative property as 10 times 9. There's my 10 times 9 equals 90, so that's not going to work because that is part of the fact family. Both of those are part of the fact family. We want ones that are not part of the fact family. 90 divided by 9, that's part of the fact family. 90 divided by 9 equals 10. Okay, that still works. It's part of that fact family. <clears throat> and 9 plus 10 equals 19. That is not going to work because we can't just throw an addition problem into that fact family, okay? Remember, multiplication goes with division, addition goes with subtraction, okay? So the last one is actually going to be the one that does not work with the fact family. It does not belong in the same fact family. <coughs> All right, number 13. I think we have one more after this maybe. Ella has 36 dolls that she wants to put in equal groups of four shelves. Which number sentence shows how many dolls will be put on each shelf? So, I think you guys like this way the best. I have 36 dolls and they need to go on groups of four shelves. So, maybe I'm going to draw my four shelves. Here's two, three, four shelves. And I have 36, or Ella has 36 total dolls. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Okay, so how many do I have on each shelf? I have 9 on this shelf, 9 on this shelf, 9 on this one, and 9 on this one. So 9 on each shelf. My question says, which number sentence shows how many dolls will be put on each shelf? Well, I took that 36 and I divided it by what? Four. And what did I get? Nine. 36 divided by four equals nine. I found it by working it out and I found it on here to match. Okay, 36 divided by four equals nine. And I'm good to go. Last one. It says, what is 81? Divided by 9 equals some number, okay? Now, find your fact families, okay? <clears throat> because you do not know this number yet, you can put a question mark, okay? That's fine. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Then you can solve that later. But let's go ahead, set this up in a way maybe we can solve it a little easier, <laughs> So I might know multiplication better. So I'm going to try to multiply. So what numbers go where? Well, where does my biggest number go in a multiplication problem? It goes at the end, right? It has to equal a big number because I'm multiplying. And that means my 9 would go somewhere, either or. And then 9 times question mark equals 81 okay multiplication my biggest number goes in the back division my biggest number goes in the front because on division i'm splitting 81 up and multiplication i'm putting it together so nine times what equals 81 well use your nines trick make that 81 on your fingers so put your eight fingers up one two three four five six seven eight and then put that next finger down, and then you have one finger left. So what finger did you put down to make 81 on your hands? You put the ninth finger down, okay? Nine times nine equals 81. Or just plug it in, okay? Does nine times six equal 81? No, that equals 54. Nine times seven equals 63. Nine times eight equals 72. Nine times nine, 81. Nine times 10, 90. Okay, so just plug them in. If there's options, you can plug them in. 
All right. So I hope you guys understand this, and I hope this has given you a lot of practice for your test on Friday or whenever you take it. Um, like always, let me know if you have any questions. If you want to rewatch this video, <clears throat> if there's parts you did not understand, go back, rewatch it. If you still don't understand, send me a message and I can help you out. Okay? All right. Go ahead and continue on with your slide presentation.